Hello, and welcome to the Rambleverse, 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 whoa. <laughs> My name is Zach, or a lot of people have called me in the past the Fist Cake. Either one's fine, I don't care what you call me. I just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> uh, and basically, this is a podcast that... I'm open to having guests, but basically I kind of just needed like an outlet to vent about video games and like video game news because whenever I bring it up to my friends, they're just like, uh huh. Okay. Old man. Just, yeah, whatever, whatever you're talking about. No, <laughs> no, they, they ask me about it and stuff. It's, it's, I'm just teasing. Um, I just kind of like wanted a spot. I can like ramble about stuff because, uh, Sometimes it kind of gets into my YouTube videos where I'm just randomly talk about something not related to the video game I'm playing at all. And the, actually the name Rambleverse has a little funny backstory to it. Uh, basically, there used to be this game called Rumbleverse. It was like out last year, I believe. I think it was still out last year. And I love that game. It was a Battle Royale uh, melee game where basically you had like your weapons were basically special moves that you could use. And below the special moves, you could like grab people, just like, you know, attack them with melee attacks. But then you can get like tiers of these special moves that were like certain grabs, certain strikes, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, it was a lot of fun. And it was published, it was made by Iron Galaxy Games. And it was published by Epic Games. And... Epic Games were basically like, oh, well, it's been six months and you haven't made anywhere near the amount of money that Fortnite makes. So, uh, bye bye. So now, uh, Iron Galaxy Games are looking for a publisher for Rumbleverse. And that's kind of the last that we've heard about that. I, I kind of feel bad about it because I was really like, I didn't, I, I wish I played the game more, um, I, I played it nonstop for like when it was at, when it was like officially released, I played the betas, the, um, you know, the stress test or whatever, but like it was announced that like they were shutting down the servers within like a, a like a month before they did it or like two weeks before they did it. I can't remember. And I was so mad that they were shutting down that I just stopped playing. I was like, well, what's the point of playing it if I'm not going to, you know, pr progress anything or like, you know, I wasn't playing with friends or anything. I was just playing against ran random people on the internet. But now I have some regrets, but not too many because I think like the last day that the game was available, they, they were, they were having like server issues or something anyway. So it, it still got cut even shorter. It just feels like Epic games like really showed no respect at all for Rumbleverse, And on top of, <laughs> On top of me um, uh, boycotting Activision Blizzard games, I am also uh, boycotting Epic Games. Pop, like just in general, like the I I uninstalled the the game store launcher, the Epic store launcher or whatever. I don't play. Uh, there was a one game. I think I played a little bit of Rocket League, which was made by them or like published by them. I don't play that anymore. I, I basically, if it has Epic games on the, 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 the intro to the game, I do not play it. Now, am I going to single handedly bring down Epic games? God, I wish. No, <laughs> if, if I wish this was like, um, what's that one anime called? King and Asura. If I remember right, where basically like these, Fancy businesses like these big businesses have uh have like a, a underground fighter that works for them, and they kind of settle all disputes via that way. I I would volunteer myself as like <laughs> just somebody that wants to take down uh <laughs> Epic Games and uh Activision Blizzard. I I don't care if you uh, play them or not. It's no I'm not gonna judge you at all. It's just my my hill that I'm going to die on, and I don't expect anybody else to die on this hill, but hey, you know what? <laughs> it's a nice comfy hill. I'm going to stay here. And I, I think that's pretty much it for the intro of the Rambleverse. I think at some point 
we might uh, stream this again. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I have I cut out like a lot of stuff, and I I like to edit because I breathe and drink a lot because I am a, I'm a bad speaker. I don't speak good, <laughs> so I, I need all the help I can get. But yeah. So for now, this is strictly going to be like a YouTube slash uh, podcast thing. Which will be, it's going to be fun to kind of like run a podcast again. I, I kind of miss doing it. But let's get into, so basically how each episode will go um, of Rambleverse. Sorry, I'm still trying to figure this out. <laughs> basically, each episode will be me talking about the games I've played. If I'm doing like a YouTube series on it, I'm not going to talk too much about it. I might like bring it up once and then talk about it again after I've beat the game. Which actually, that reminds me, I should probably talk about. Let's cut out one of these and add that. Okay. So anyways, talk about games I've played, and games or anime or shows or whatever I've watched, and talk about video game news. If you're if you're an old listener of the Content Complete podcast, you'll realize this is exactly the same format, but it's just me now. <laughs> and I kind of just do this when I can, and it's for fun. Anyways, games I have played recently, off the top of my head, I have been uh, trying to exercise more and trying to get healthier, and I've been going to the gym and stuff. Uh, that's been going okay. But then Niantic Games, the people who made uh, Pokemon Go, uh, announced like last month, I think, or two months ago. I don't remember when, but I got a notification on my phone like, hey, Monster Hunter Now is being released in September, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, what's this? A Monster Hunter game that I you, you go outside and walk around and hunt monsters in? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> so I pre-registered for that, and I have been playing it every day since it came out. Uh, sometimes I kind of I don't walk as long, but uh, I, I I hunt all the monsters. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, basically, if you don't if you are not familiar with Monster Hunter at all, it's the title's pretty self explanatory. You just hunt giant monsters. That's really the whole <laughs> that's the whole thing. <laughs> that's the long and short of it. Um, I find it fun. It's it's like well it's it's just kind of fun to like do something while you're walking around. Cause you're not, you know, you're not thinking about like, Oh God, I'm here. I am walking around. Woohoo. <laughs> Can't wait for this walk to be done. And I, I never played Pokemon go. So I, I can't really like uh, compare this to that. But, um, if somebody has played monster hunter now and Pokemon go and, uh, have some notes or whatever, please let me know. But, it's a pretty fun game. You just literally you walk around, you find like little uh, mines or bone piles to get materials. And you can also kill smaller monsters, which are just really easy fights. And then you also fight the big monsters, which are like actual fights. And you basically you're all, you're always just trying to get materials from them. All these monsters, all these mining out crops, all these bone piles. And you're using that to upgrade your character via better armor and better weapons. The only, um, uh, the, for weapon wise, they don't have every game, every weapon from the, the monster hunter games, which is kind of understandable. Well, not kind of, which is understandable because I don't know how they will, uh, um, I don't know how a charge blade will work on the monster hunter now. Because the way, like, basically the way you fight Monster Hunter now, you tap, when you're fighting a monster, you can slide up to dash towards a monster, slide down to back away from the monster, and slide left or right to dodge that way. And then you tap the screen to attack. And then you get, like, a special, like, a special move that you press whenever the cooldown on it is uh, done. That's a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's a nice little distraction from walking around town. Uh... I, I, I enjoy it. I I hunt monsters with my monster dogs every day. <laughs> the only complaint I really had, well, it's not. I don't know how to how I feel about it. I guess quite yet, because like I under like it's partly a skill issue and partly like you're gonna have a hard time getting new people into the game. Basically, every day you get five 
uh, first aid meds, which are basically potions. And if you don't know any better, you're probably going to like use those up to make sure your character's at top health at all time. But really, you want to save those as like a revive for a fight. So like if you get knocked down to zero, you can use a uh, first aid med to get yourself back up to 50 and continue the fight. So you get five free first aid meds every day and everything else. You, If you want to get any more potions, which are basically first aid meds that are not free uh, and anything else, you have to uh, pay for it. I, I signed up. I mean, I, I bought the like the there's like this pack where you can like pay five or ten dollars i forget or basically you get like 300 of the premium premium currency and then you get 50 more each day for 30 days kind of like what genshin impact has and like a few other uh free to play games if i was just strictly interested in it it, it, sorry if i was strictly interested it oh my god (laughs) if i was strictly interested in it as just a video game I don't think it would be up to snuff, but since I'm using it as an excuse to walk around and get more steps in and get more, you know, walking around, get more miles in, I'm going to, I'm going to let it slide. But if it gets more, uh, like pay to win or whatever, I'll have some issues about it. But like right now, like I said, I don't really know how I feel about it because you can mitigate that by, you can mitigate like having to use your first day meds a lot by, learning to dodge better, learning to play better, etc. But I feel like that's not going to like attract any new people to the to the game. Also there's a story in it. I haven't paid attention to the story at all. I think basically it's oh my god, monsters are in the real world and here you have to help fight them. Here you go. <laughs> um oh, weapons in the game. I think it's as far as I've seen, I, you you get like new monsters Every time you like level up your hunter rank, you get access to like to more and more monsters to fight out in the real world. But um weapon wise, uh I think it's the long sword, sword and shield, arrow, and bow gun. Sorry, I forgot I don't have my my hand out here. Uh <laughs> um which I think is a reasonable amount of the weapons to have in the game. Oh, and there's a hammer, I think, too. So I, I wonder if they'll add any more to the game um, as a, 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 as like maybe future content or something, but I don't know. It's a fun little game. I enjoyed it, or I've been enjoying it, and it helps me walk around and get less fat. So, you know what? We'll let it slide. All right, what's next on the list here? Baldur's Gate 3. I don't want to get too much into it because, like I said, I'm doing a YouTube series on it. Um, Still trying to figure out how I want to do that exactly. I've already restarted once for the YouTube. Uh, I I don't think I'll restart again. But I'm trying to figure out how to, like, use, like, the wild card effect. Or not the wild card effect. Like, making making it reasonably random. Um... Because there was this, oh, what the hell was it? I wish I could remember these these guys' name. Let me look it up real quick. Okay, so this was 100 years ago, and I can't find the original people who did this. And now everybody and their dog has done versions of this to Fallout 3 and various other RPG games. But 100 years ago, there used to be like a series where somebody was playing... Fallout three or new Vegas, if I remember right. And the, the, um, they would just like randomize every interaction, every choice, everything. And I thought about doing that for Baldur's gate three. And I did one session of it and it went okay. It's just the like process of actually doing it, like adds makes like recording the episodes twice as long. And I don't got time for that. Uh, um, so yeah, uh, that's that's my own personal demons with it, but other than that, it's a fantastic RPG game. It's like literally, I would say it is the best RPG game out there in terms of like, you are, like, it has like basically complete freedom on how you approach things. You can literally do anything. You can like, you know, steal, assassinate, talk with a person, 
uh, all, there's like endless interactions with endless items and objects and people. You can uh, literally like, I'm trying to, how, how would I describe this? At a certain point, you like encounter like these three ogres and they're like, hey, we're going to eat you. And you can be like, no, please don't eat me. What if I f- offer you a way to get more meat in the future? And they're like, oh, okay, here, blow this horn. And you're like, okay, cool. There's like a, an interaction if like if some of the steals like if you can. Oh man, I'm butchering this so bad. <laughs> uh, basically, you can also just like have somebody steal the horn while you're talking to this guy, and then once that happens, like once he's like, "Oh yeah, here, just take my horn," he'll be like, "Oh my god, where's my horn?" I think I have an idea who took my horn and he fights you or whatever. And and that's just like the one of like one of many examples of like how to you can like approach uh, an encounter or a person in general. Anything, really. Um, I'm trying to think of anything specific for me, but I, I don't really have anything off the top of my head currently. I played a lot through act one on like my personal playthrough, but then I was like, Oh, well I'm not really saving any reactions or um, any surprises for the people who are like watching me play the game. So I'm like, okay, well I should probably stop playing that. But, but basically Baldur's Gate three, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. It's a, it's a good time. And I, if, if you enjoy RPG games, if you enjoy Dungeons and Dragons, I highly recommend playing Baldur's Gate 3. I think it's out now on the PlayStation 5 and the computer and the Xbox One, I think. Or it's coming out to the Xbox One soon. Either way, go play it. If you don't want to play it, go check out my <laughs> my YouTube videos about it. And yeah. Okay, now it's time for my indie game bullshit here. Uh, I've been playing another... In the, in the sense of, like, Vampire Survivors, which, if you haven't played Vampire Survivors, go play Vampire Survivors. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I've been playing God of Weapons, which basically, it's another, like, auto-shooter um, uh, wave game. Like, you kind of go through, like, waves of enemies as you... Uh, it's What's, like, what are all the keywords for this? I'm trying to think. <laughs> There's so many keywords in video games now. It's a roguelike, like each encounter is different, like each run is different. It's a bullet heaven thing where basically you have like the ideas for you to have like a bunch of weapons and stuff like going out and hitting monsters and whatnot. Bullet heaven, and it's like an auto shooter, which is a, I think another thing, I don't know. But basically you will pick a character, which I think there's like 10 or 12 from what I remember seeing on the, the screen. And... You pick that character, you get a starting weapon, and you start the run. As you go through the the run, there's like it's like twenty or thirty rounds or something like that. So you'll do like one round for like a minute, fight monsters, and then in between rounds, you have like a little attaché case from uh from like Resident Evil Four, and you can like upgrade the the space for it by adding like little squares and stuff, and then you can like buy more weapons and items and uh, equipment and whatnot, and it's just it's this it's just really like a lot of fun. I I enjoy it for like a quick like I'll just try to do like a run real quick. Like I wonder how many weapons I can get on this guy. And I just played the barbarian class, which they specialize in fist weapons. So of course you know me, I had to play her. <laughs> so it's just a lot of fun to see like how the weapons interact and like what kind of upgrades you can get with them. And I've barely scratched the surface. I've only locked like three characters and a handful of items. There's a there's countless items to unlock for this game. So if you, I think it's only on Steam if I remember correctly. But if you have Steam and you want to play a fun little game, I highly recommend God of Weapons. So it's, it's a fun game. I really enjoyed it. All right, so that was God of Weapons. Okay. <laughs> I have played the hot RPG Starfield. Um, I played it for about two to three hours. And then I uh, 
uninstalled it. I think I'm going to wait for it to become like a more polished thing and also for it to be a just bigger game in general. But it really turned me off from it. I mean, like the the combat's fine. The exploration is like any other Bethesda game exploration, which is fine. And I didn't really get too far into like the the ship building or the uh, having a ship in general, all the space stuff or whatever. It's all fine, but what really drew me off, like turned me off was the, the skills in the game. Like you can like unlock skills and like none of it just seemed really good. Like I kind of like looked through, I'm like, why? Like you get like 5% increase in damage or like a 10% increase in damage. There's no like unlocking additional skills or something. You don't get like a special bonus or whatever for like being a melee class or whatever. Um, so it was all fine. I don't want to rip on it too much because I don't think that's fair because a lot of people seem to be enjoying Starfield and I don't want to kind of pee on their parade. But since I, I was like kind of disappointed with Starfield, I'm like, I want to play a space game. I don't really play Starfield. So I got back into No Man's Sky again for the 300th time. And I've been playing on the, the PlayStation 5. I, I have a PC version. Let me see how many hours I have on the PC version. I have 228 hours on the PC version, and I know I had 40 hours on one save, and now I'm up to like 60 hours on my current save on the PlayStation 5. So I have about played, what is that, 228 plus 50 is 270 plus 60, so it's about 238, so about, or 338, so about 340 hours of No Man's Sky, holy shit. Uh, I've really been enjoying it. They just recently came out with uh, a new update, which unlocked like a fifth race, which is brand new. Um, well, not fifth. Yeah, it, it, you, basically your character can be like five different races, which include like the three that inhabit the universe, the Viking, the Gek, and the Corvax. And then there's like the Traveler race for you and the Anomaly race for you. But then there's also now, I guess the sixth race for your uh, character is called the Autophage. And the Autophage is kind of like a less sleek, it's a it's a more robotic version of the Corvax. The Corvax are basically, have like a basic body, but then you have like all the Corvax heads versus the Autophage. You can like customize, you have like a wide variety of uh, of body parts to select from that make you look more robotic. You can like look like a, a beaten down robot. You can look like a fancy robot. You can look like a Terminator. Uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. It's a lot of fun. It also introduces um, uh, like uh, yeah, introduces the autophage and autophage weapons, which I forget what they're technically called, but basically they're just f- fun new uh, multi tools to use. Oh, and you can make staffs, which are pretty cool looking. I need to make a. I need to make a new staff. I kind of want to make a, a better looking staff, I think, and uh, upgrade it. But basically, you kind of go through like these series of quests to kind of unlock one, how to find the autophage, which I think is a pretty cool idea. But they kind of like inhabit area, like they inhabit points of interest in the game that already exist. And then you kind of use like a scanner, like a special scanner to find them. Then they appear to you. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Uh, I, I've, I've gone through all that. I've locked all the, the stuff for that. And now I'm kind of just uh, tinkering away at a base whenever I have time. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I I, uh, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a better game than Starfield. I think it's a, a more spacey game than Starfield. I think it's more space adjacent. Whereas I think Starfield tried to balance the RPG and the spaciness of it. And they got like, I don't know. I feel like each, like one was like, I think, I feel like since they're trying to go for both, they kind of like drag themselves down in the quality of the game, but there might be updates in the future. There might be DLC that adds stuff. So I will just wait, wait and see because I think there is potential in Starfield. I just don't think the base game itself currently is not, not quite there. All right. Now it's time to get into the video game news, but I kind of stole, well, I stole the bit from, I think I did that before, 
Pat did it in uh, Castle Super Beast. But like he, he I, I, you know, you think of news and you think of that ticker thing that goes bada ba ba breaking news bada ba ba ba. So it's not like you know nobody's stealing from anybody really. <laughs> There's no original idea under the sun, okay? There's there's nothing new anymore. It's just the same shit recycled over and over again into slightly different things. It's just all bullshit. <laughs> but anyways, into the video game news. And uh, we're going to talk about something that might affect Rumbleverse. Um, I was kind of scrolling through Reddit the other day. Uh which, you know, I've kind of broke down and finally installed the official Reddit app after they they kind of, like, killed all the other Reddit apps. Anyways, long story short, I went through the Rumbleverse uh, subreddit, and there was one post where they're like, hey, it's a long shot, but uh, October 5th, Ghost Ship Games are announcing a new game they're publishing in. Uh, uh, Rumble and the... Uh, you know, Iron Galaxy are looking for new publishers for Rumbleverse. So, you know, they're, you know, it, it could happen. It's unlikely, but it could happen. You know, Ghost Ship Games might publish it. Long story short, sorry, long story short, Ghost Ship Games are the people who made Deep Rock Galactic and they also publish other games, which I think I have a few here. Sorry, they're going to publish a few games, it looks like, such as Spell Rogue, which is a turn-based deck building roguelike, uh, Dark Swarm, an online or local co-op top-down tactical shooter, uh, and then also Deep Rock Galactic Survivor, which is kind of like the... It's kind of like that God of Weapons game where it's like a, another auto-shooter where basically you're just kind of like... Uh, you know, walking around the game, shooting monsters near you, and you're just trying to survive and, uh, you know, kill all the mod stars. But yeah, so, and uh, it's it, it seems interesting, you know, I actually want to play that Deep Rock Galactic Survivor whenever it comes out. That'll be a lot of fun to play. But they announced that they're, they're doing a developer broadcast live on Thursday, October 5th, around... I don't know what CET is actually off the top of my head, but you know, it's happening sometime uh, at 1400 CET. So, you know, you do the math to your local area. If you're interested in watching it, um, they're going to reveal updates from the stuff they're already publishing. They're going to reveal the next game that's been picked up by Ghost ship publishing. And they're also um, going to update, you know, they have a bunch of new information about, I forgot they released a deep rock galactic board game which is crazy. Uh, I think it's like a hundred dollars or something. It's pretty expensive, but it's, I think I'll, I think it'd be fun to play. Maybe I'll have to get it for as like a gift for myself for Christmas or something. But, um, anyways, really the, the, t- the first two things are pretty interesting. It's all interesting, but like the first two things are more relevant to us here. Um, I am interested in hoping that maybe that deep rock survivor game will, uh, come out soon and then also I am interested to see that maybe I'm interested to see the next game being published by them and my fingers are crossed and we can all hope and pray gather our our chi together to summon <laughs> the most unlikely of scenarios and have a uh, deep rock um sorry ghost ship uh publish um rumble first so that would be that would be the ideal scenario, but we'll, I don't think that's very likely, but we can dream. It, you know, what's the point of living if you don't have a couple dreams at least, you know? <laughs> so yeah, October 5th, keep, uh, let's, let's, I'm going to, I'm going to be keeping my eye on it. I'm going to keep my, my schedule open for that and, uh, hope, hope for the best there. Next is if you know anything about me and games I've played in the past or whatever. I'm a huge Yakuza fan, the video games. I don't know if I can condone the actual Yakuza, but you know, <laughs> the, the Yakuza games are a lot of fun for like the first six. Well, I say six, but there's like a hundred Yakuza games. Um, zero through six, Yakuza zero through Yakuza six are all action games, like little fighting beat em ups where you play as, uh, Kazuma Kiru and as he kind of deals with the, the Tojo clan, but, oh, I forgot they changed the name for the, 
the Yakuza 7 and Yakuza 8 games. So for Yakuza 7, they switched to Like a Dragon because you're not playing as the dragon of Dojima, uh, Kazuma Kiryu. You're playing as Ichiban Kasuga, I believe his name is. Yeah, Kasuga. I know his first name is Ichiban. But um, you're playing as him and, and uh, Like a Dragon, Yakuza 7 or whatever. And that's a fun RPG. It's basically... <laughs> You're kind of going, you're kind of dealing with like a lot of the same Yakuza stuff, like, you know, all the, 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 um, backlash from all the other games, the history, and there's like cameos from other characters that have been in the series. But basically you play as like a, a guy who, um, went to jail for, he basically took the, the blame for a crime that his crime boss's son committed, if I remember correctly. So you're in jail for like 10 years or 18 years. It's basically, <laughs> it's very convenient because you're basically in jail the entire time. Like Yakuza one through six happens. So you have like, you know, you have no recollection. You have no idea what happened. You don't know what's going on at all. Regards to, and regarding to that. And Yakuza seven is a lot of fun. Like, like a dragon seven, whatever you want to call it. It's a lot of fun. But today they, well, not today, but three days ago, uh, you could, like a dragon infinite wealth, which is the new game, uh, got trailers and a release date, which is going to be sometime in January. If I remember right, the game releases on January 26th. There we go. Okay. So yeah, that'll be uh, pretty cool. I'm very excited to play that. Uh, and this one, basically, it seems like that you are going to be playing as Ichiban again, hang out with all your friends from before and you're trying to find your mom in Honolulu, Hawaii, which is the first time a Yakuza game has been in America, which I know technically, I mean, you know, Hawaii, Hawaii is part of the United States of America, but it's just like, you know, an Island way out there. So (laughs) either way, it'll be a cool, it's a cool setting that I'm very interested in. Um, I don't like to check out the trailers too much because I feel like one, I kind of have like my own, it's not like a huge spoiler, but they have like revealed some stuff that like I think would be better revealed in the game than like you seeing it on the trailer. Yeah, and and uh, Kiryu gets the Kiryu's back in this game too. He was in uh, like a Dragon Seven as well as like a as like a a, a back as a um what's the name what's the word as like a, a cameo. He kind of shows up for a little bit and he if you know he kind of explains some story stuff and appears in this one. I saw like a clip of it that you can get him as a team member for at least a little bit. And his special move is that he can change the game from being an RPG game to like back to like the the older Yakuza games, and he just beats the shit out of everybody. <laughs> he just just fights everybody like normal. It's a lot of fun. I'm very excited to see that. Um, what else is in here? Some details. Okay. Do, 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 do. Oh, you can move around while fighting in the game, which that's more that's pretty interesting because in Yakuza and like a Dragon Seven. You could not move around. You could basically like your characters will automatically move depending on the, the attacks they would do and whatever actions happen, but you couldn't like physically move your character around. They would just automatically do it. Whereas this, it seems like there's like an actual movement option has some fun mini games. Of course it's a Yakuza game. It has to have fun mini games. What's really interesting though, is they have, uh, actors in this game, uh, such as Danny Treyu, Tre Treyu, Danny Treyu. I think I'm saying his name right. And he's gonna be playing as a, a like a a gang boss or whatever. <laughs> I saw I saw an image of it. I'm like, is that Danny Treyu? Treyu? I'm sure. Like, I'm surely that can't be him. And by God, it was. They've had like uh, Japanese actors in the past play cameos in the game, but no American ones, as far as I know. So yeah, I'm very interested to play that, and I'm also interested to play in like. Uh, what's the other one called? There's another one. Oh, like a dragon Gaiden, the man who raised his name, which basically you play as Kiryu in between Yakuza seven and this one that kind of like leads up to the game. I think that's going to be released later on in November or something. If I remember correctly, I only know that it's being released in November because I saw a news thing about how it it's going, it's going to be released on the game pass the same day it comes out. Oh, November 9th. There we go. Not, not, uh, never mind. Not in October. November 9th is when Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name, will be coming out on 
all consoles, I think, and also the piece and the Xbox PC Game Pass. So that'll be cool. All right. Uh, next story here. Do 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 boop. I'm Mr. Heat Miser. Um, Unity has uh has been in some hot water recently. Let me try to kind of just get this all set up here. But basically, September twelfth, Unity, the the game engine, announced that they were gonna ha- adjust like how all their fees and like uh, everything works uh, now. Um, let me. I'm, I'm pulling up this article from Kotaku. Uh, on September twelfth, they announced that they have a new runtime fee, which is based on the number of installations installations a game built with unity receives as well as the revenue it generates it wasn't it's uh, let's see what that did apply to any game the runtime fee will apply to any game that has reached both a previously established annual revenue threshold and a lifetime install count um uh, sorry there's just like a lot of revenue and st- and whatnot, but basically I'm trying to get to like what the fees actually are. Okay. Unity personal and unity plus, which are different versions of unity. Uh, devs will have to pay 20 cents for every game installed past their subscription specific thresholds, though it won't start until January 1st, 2024. The runtime fee will apply to any game that has reached both a previously established annual revenue threshold and a lifetime install count games developed with a lower cost unity personal and unity plus plans reach that threshold at 200,000 of revenue in one year and 200,000 lifetime installs. While Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise accounts must reach $1 million in revenue and 1 million lifetime installs for the fee to kick in. Unity Personal and Unity Plus devs will have to pay $0.20 for every game installed past their subscription-specific thresholds. Unity Pro devs will have to fork over between $0.2 to uh, $0.15 and $0.15. For every install past theirs, and Unity Enterprise devs costs range from one cent to twelve cents, essentially thirteen cents. Uh, okay. Developers in emerging markets will have lower costs per install past their threshold. The announcement was met with widespread confusion as devs of yeah. So there's like a lot of games are built with Unity, especially like a lot of smaller games, and everybody was like up in arms about this because, for one example. Uh, let's, um, so yeah, so shortly after the policy was announced, the developer of Rust, Gary Newman, wondered if Unity wants them to start paying them, like, wants the Rust developers to start paying Unity 200k a month before doing the math and realizing that they would actually have to, they would actually owe the, the game, com- the game engine company about $410,000 a month instead. Basically, there was, a, like, a hole to do because it's, not just like it's not going forward this is like affecting games retroactively that have also that also have the unity engine and a lot of people were upset because like well i don't want to like you know i don't want to have to pay all this money just to have my game out like i you know this will break you know what about free to play games that use unity they're going to have to um they're going to have to like basically shut down the game or uh do something else with it so a lot of people are upset by this, and especially people who are making games currently in the Unity engine, and they're like, well, we're going to have to either pivot or think of something else or whatever. I kind of saw this from the developers of uh, Slay the Spire. They're working on a new game, and they're like, hey, let me try to find the Slay the Spire. Mega crit, that's the people who made Slay the Spire. I I kind of like realized the, like, the extent of this from reading... Uh, this tweet maker team has been hard at work these past two years on a new game, but unlike with slay the spire, the engine we have been unlike, yeah, but unlike with slay the spire, the engine we have been developing it is in is unity. The retroactive pricing structure of runtime fees is not only harmful in a myriad of ways to developers, especially indies. It is also a violation of trust. We believe unity is fully aware of this seeing as they have gone so far as to remove their TOS from GitHub. Despite the immense amount of time and effort our team has already poured into dev development on our new title, we'll be, we will be migrating to a new engine unless the changes are completely reverted and TOS protections are put in, are put in place. We have never made a public statement before, which that is true. That is how badly you fucked up. 
<laughs> which is like, holy shit. That's a, uh, that's some pretty hot water. Uh, so yeah, apparently they also re- removed the TOS from their GitHub, which I guess, you know, they're probably like working on changing it or something. Um, long story short, that was a while ago. That was September 12th. Um, let's see here as of yesterday of this recording. So ne- September 22nd, unity has made some changes. <laughs> they have done the classic. <laughs> they have done the class. It is the most typical corporate, like, we're sorry. We didn't mean to completely fuck you over. We just wanted to completely fuck you over and make some money. That's all. We didn't We didn't mean to hurt your feelings. We just wanted to destroy your business and make a lot of money. That's all. Uh, I'll read a little bit of this. this. So this is from Unity, an open letter to our community by Mark Witten. <clears throat> to our community, I'm Mark Witten, and I lead Unity Create, which includes the Unity Engine and Editor Teams. I want to start with this. I am sorry. We should have spoken with more of you and we should have incorporated more of your feedback before announcing our new runtime fee policy. Our goal with this policy is to ensure we can continue to support you today and tomorrow and keep deeply investing in our game engine. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Let's see here. Unity personal plan will remain free and there will be no runtime fee for games built on Unity personal. We will be increasing the cap from 100,000 to 200,000 and will remove the requirement to use the made with you unity splash screen, which I I saw that they removed that. I'm like, that's, that's like the least annoying. That's, I don't think anybody minds putting that splash screen on uh, the beginning of a game. Every single video game I've ever played has like made with this or made with that or like, you know, variations of that. I think that's more than fair to have the made with blank splash screen. So I feel like they just threw that into, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. It's just like, I guess they're trying to like throw them any kind of uh, a, a bone or whatever, but it's a bone that nobody wants. Um, what else do we have here? No game with less than $1 million and trailing 12 month revenue will be subject to the fee. For those creators on Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise, we are also making changes based on your feedback. The runtime fee policy will only apply beginning with the next LTS version of Unity shipping in 2024 and beyond. So they're they're not retroactively uh, using these. They're not act retroactively um, enforcing this runtime fees policy. It's just going to go with. It's just going to continue with games going forward. Um, let's see, but you're doing actually stand that for games that are subject to the runtime fee. We're giving you a choice of either a 2.5% revenue share or the calculated amount based on the number of new people engaging with your game each month. Both of these numbers are self-reported from data you already have available. You will always be billed a lesser amount. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Okay. So yeah, so they, <laughs> they're like, oh. Everybody is uh, trying to uh, leave our our engine. Everybody is trying to abandon ship. Um, it's not looking good. <laughs> so, of course, they had to have somebody, you know, do the corporate, I'm sorry letter. It's stuff you see a thousand times. Uh, you know, the company will make some huge, stupid decision. To, and it's like, I'm sorry. We didn't listen to the community. You didn't listen to the community because you didn't ask the community and you don't give a shit about the community. You want to make money. Every business wants to make money. Uh, Some are more transparent about it than others. That's basically the long story. Long story short, reading this Kotaku article, just trying to see if there's anything else that I might have missed, which I don't think so. Um, No, it does not look like it. Uh, Yeah, so... (laughs) They shit the beds and they're like, oh man, um, well, we're sorry for shitting the bed. We didn't mean to shit the bed. We just meant to, <laughs> we just meant to set the bed on fire and sell the bed <laughs> for a lot of money. <laughs> so we'll see if they add any other updates, but I, I don't think a lot of people are going to be using unity for much longer. I wonder if mega crit changed anything. Let's see here. There does not appear to be any more information from mega crit as to how they're going to approach this unity uh, engine, uh, news. So, all right, what's next? Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> this is funny. Cause I, I was really excited for this game. It's, uh, 
I I'm, 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 I played a lot of Payday 2 back in the day with my friends, and I really enjoyed it. And I saw Payday 3 was coming out, and I was really excited to play it. And then I noticed that, one, I played through the tutorial or whatever. I'm like, oh, this is cool. This seems fun. I played through the, the tutorial, and I went to play online, and like I saw that by default there's only like online play options only. I think I said only twice. You know, that's very cool. So I saw that there was only online play. I'm like, okay, what if I just do invite friends and start the game? Or start... you? So... <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place with this. Payday 3 has come out officially. I, have, I played the tutorial of it. I was really excited to play the game. I go to play the actual game. You know, queue up for a mission. And I wanted to play with some bots and stuff, just kind of like get a feel for the game itself and, you know, see how everything runs and whatnot. And then once I'm more comfortable with it, you know, maybe I'll play with strangers or I'll try to uh, blackmail some people into playing it with me, you know, (laughs) something like that. But uh, I didn't get very far because when I was queuing up for the match, I noticed that there's no like just play the mission by yourself. There's no play with bots option. Um so I looked up, like, how do you play with bots? Because I saw some screenshots of people playing with bots, but, uh, and they were like, well, you one, you just play, you know, you, you start the matchmaking process with invite friends only, but two, you're going to be lucky to even play that because there's like a huge uh, wait time for it. Like I, even playing by yourself when... <laughs> So even if you're trying to play by yourself, you you can't play the game because the, the servers are just absolutely uh, destroyed by all the people trying to play it, I guess. Um, and I, I tried it multiple times. Like I checked the Steam, the Steam forums to see if like the game was up again or not. And uh, it's just all the all the forum threads are just like uh, game still not. You know, the game is still not playing. I still can't get into a match, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, all right, that's day one, you know. That's that's to be expected, you know. That's going to happen with, like, uh, these new games. Sometimes they don't plan accordingly. And the second day comes, and I'm like, all right, let's see if I can play now. And they're like, nope, still, still not happening. So <laughs> I have returned payday three for that reason. I refunded it on Steam for that reason, and also it's on the Xbox PC Game Pass, so I'm just going to install it there. Why would I pay for a game if I can just get on the Xbox Game Pass? But, um, I don't know. It was really, it's really confusing, because, like, they know how big their game is. They know a lot of people are going to be playing this, and they just absolutely shit the bed. And, uh... The fact that it's online only, like you can only play online. So that's why there's like lag for even like matchmaking with like by yourself with bots. That's that's crazy. That's that's a terrible idea. It's just so weird. Like, I, I don't know why you would do that. Why would you? <laughs> why would you? <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 a very um, it's not a very good look. I uh, I hope that they fix it soon. And um but yeah, it's just so weird. Like uh, they know, I don't, I don't know. I'm kind of just going around in circles now, but so yeah, payday three, uh, I would wait to get it. Maybe like wait another week or so. There's no news or update that indicates that all these server issues are fixed yet. Um, I, uh, trying to see what else do, 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 do. So nothing new from this article actually. Yeah. So yeah, it just, so basically I would wait on getting paid day three. Uh, I would wait like, I don't know, keep like pay attention to the news about it. Pay attention to what people are saying about it and just wait to play payday three. And don't forget, I think payday two is still out. Go play that instead while you wait for payday three to become a functional video game. <laughs> but yeah, I was really excited to play it, but I guess it's not going to happen. On to our last piece of news here. Um, this is a really short one. I'll make it short, but basically I have, I've played a little bit of Sea of Thieves. I've dabbled in it. I'm like, okay, well this seems interesting, but I don't really have friends that play it. And it's like 90 gigs. It's a huge game for what, like what it looks like. But I think it's because of like of all the water graphics and whatnot, like the water looks fantastic in the game. 
and it is fun when you play with friends, but um, uh, long story short, they have uh, released the a uh, season 10 um, announcement and what they're going to do with the game. Uh, one, which I think is very interesting for people who are like, who want to play Sea of Thieves, but they're kind of scared that they might get murdered by random pirates on the, the seas that have been playing this game you know, for 30 billion hours and they know what they're doing versus these new people. Uh, with season 10, they're going to release a safer seas function, which is basically you and however many friends you want can play in these safer seas. And that's, it's just you and your friends. It's just you and like your whole, your ship crew. There's no PVP. It's only PVE. I think, I think that's a good idea. I think that's a very smart idea to like have people kind of, you know, be able to like, dip their toe in the water and get a feel for it uh, versus, you know, (laughs) you're trying to uh, trying to figure out like what the hell you're even doing in the game. And then you're getting like bombarded by 12 year olds screaming on their Xbox mics. Like, Oh, I got you. You dumbass. (laughs) That's probably the nicest things that 12 year olds have said on the internet. Actually, but (laughs) those 12 year olds, they're, they're ruthless. (laughs) Um, So that's really cool. Another thing that I find super interesting is that they are announcing a guild function, which basically it's like basically, uh, basically, 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 (laughs) they have introduced guilds. They're going to introduce guilds. Excuse me. They haven't introduced guilds yet. They are going to introduce guilds, which is really cool. Uh, Basically, you and up to 24 other, sorry, a total of 24 people can be in a guild and you can, um, you all kind of like work together towards certain goals and you can also like share vessels. So you can like share progression on the same vessel with other friends. So maybe if you're offline and somebody wants to level up a ship or something, you know, they want to like use your ship for some reason they can use your ship and uh, increase the progression on that. Um, and it's just a lot of, fun. It, it's, it seems really cool to be like, be able to be, part of a guild because usually if you're playing with friends, it's just like you and those four friends or whatever. And you know, you're kind of like going like, Hey, are you, you guys want to play tonight? No, I can't play tonight. I'm like, okay, well I guess I'll just play by myself. Oh, I got murdered by another crew. So I think having guilds is going to be really helpful for uh, people who are interested in playing the game, but you know, everybody has lives, everybody has things going on and not everybody is available at the same time. So having a pool of 24 people to kind of like, uh, you know, uh, get people from, I think that's pretty handy. And they're also going to introduce this, uh, competitive quest called the skull of the siren song. It's like a little thing you can opt into while you're out doing your, you know, your pirating or whatever. You'll get like a letter on your mask that says, Hey, you want to get the skull of the siren song? And you can be like, yeah, sure. Why not? So then you have to find and dig up the the like the key and the chest for the skull of the siren song. And when you have either one, your uh, position on the map is revealed to everybody that is on that server or on that instance of the game. So everybody can see where you're at and uh, they can try to get either the key or the chest themselves. And. I think that's, that's pretty interesting. I think that's going to be a very fun way to play the game to like see what happens there. Like, you know, people trying to gank other people, uh, a lot of competitiveness. Um, so yeah, this might actually get me into the game and see if I can, uh, bribe other people to play with me. I've already used black. I'm using blackmail to convince other people to play with me. So I got to bribe the others. Otherwise, if I blackmail everybody, then I won't have any friends anymore. That's how that goes. (laughs) All right, I think that'll do it for our first ever uh, Rambleverse. Yeah, I, I didn't really think about how to end this, actually. I don't, <laughs> whoops. Um, <laughs> I I would say this. Uh, if you're interested in more of Rambleverse, please let me know in the comments below. If you're listening to this on your podcast device, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll have an email set up. If you're listening to this on the podcast device, check out the episode description. Uh, and I'll have like an email for questions, comments, or concerns with all the typical podcast stuff. Give this a five star rating on whatever app you use to listen to this. Um, everything helps. 
I'm 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 open to having guests. I don't know who I can get. I I you know I'll I'll see if I can find people to kind of tag along for an episode or two. But um, yeah, no, it's just really nice and fun to kind of just ramble on about stuff about video game stuff again. Hopefully, this is a usable episode. <laughs> There's a lot of breaks in here, a lot of editing, but uh, that will probably be easier in the future. But yeah, that's it for this. If you're watching this on the YouTube. Uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe, uh, share. I mean, I'm happy to talk, discuss any of these uh, news articles or video games with anybody. It's, it's you know, it's fun to get a multiple, uh, a multitude of uh, opinions on stuff. If you're watching, if you're listening to this on the podcast, um, you know, you can email me <laughs> with your comments and concerns and all that stuff, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be on the lookout for guests. It, it might be a while before I can get anybody on here. I don't know what kind of strings I can pull, but I might be able to pull a string or two. We'll see. But yeah, thank you for watching slash listening, and we'll see you next time. (laughs) Bye-bye.